New Mexico schools are asked to do an awful lot. Boost test scores, graduation rates, use more technology. The list is long. The one thing they don't do, though, is control all the money that comes to them. That's bread frustration, <laughs> to put it mildly. Presently, the president of the Santa Fe School District openly mulled the idea of suing this state for unconstitutional funding. Now, Sophie, this is not an entirely uncommon situation in school districts across the country. But here's another matter, because, you know, there's been rumblings for some months now that some of the bigger districts might just take this course and some other districts might join them in it. So let's talk about Santa Fe first. It, you know, some tough language off that school board meeting, the planning meeting they had on Monday. What's your sense of the language coming out of that? So, so my sense of it is that the Santa Fe school board is, is looking at their you know, their school system looking at the needs that they have, mm -hmm. saying, we don't have enough to get done everything that we need to get done. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's always a lot of discussion of unfunded mandates. There's a lot of belly aching about that, and I think a lot of it justified across the state. Mm -hmm. And um, they're looking at the rainy day fund. They're looking at money that's coming out of the permanent fund the in investments. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, we want, we want a piece of that action. Now, um, the school board president seems to think that there may be a constitutional basis mm -hmm. for the Santa Fe schools to go in and argue that they're not getting enough money and, and potentially the schools across the state aren't mm -hmm. getting enough money, not just mm -hmm. Santa Fe. I think that that remains to be seen whether that's the case. Um, and I don't necessarily get the impression mm -hmm. that the president has really looked all the way in, it has looked all the way into <laughs> it. But, but, let me ask but that's, that's, you know, but it's an interesting, <laughs> but it's an interesting <laughs> Interesting. It's sure. an interesting idea, and, and and one that I'm curious to see what will happen if they take it forward. What did you make of the angle of it being a civil liberty, civil rights issue? That's interesting to me. Okay, so that's an attorney. So well, but the U.S. That's how you get your fees, right? The, right. But the U.S. <laughs> U.S. Supreme Court, as I recall, has 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 pushed back against this idea mm -hmm. that a public education is a is a civil right. Mm -hmm. um, I I think though, I mean, I know the U.S. tends to push back again to use that term mm -hmm. against um, international standards but the international standard is that is you know, clean water and education and all of that for every child and and I happen to believe personally that a mm -hmm. solid education is a human right mm -hmm. and, I, and mm -hmm. I would like to see that for New Mexico. And Matthew Reichbach you think in Santa Fe that would be a fairly popular not to you know, cast a wide brush here but it's a fairly lefty town you would think that would be an angle of attack here well, uh, and, and just a point of interest uh, uh, in 2011 APS decided not to sue but I'm wondering if, if they just wanted a different lead pony here. They didn't want to be in front. Do you know what I'm saying? It's right. well, interesting. The superintendent is so tight with well, the guys. APS always has the target on their back. From, right. I'm, I'm right. sure Winston Brooks is on some dart boards up in, uh, <laughs> up in Santa Fe. But on the fourth floor. <laughs> on, the fourth, <laughs> on the fourth floor. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if Santa Fe kind of leads out and says, because sure. this could be a complete overhaul sure. of the way Again, that everything is fun. It's like Again. the fourth time in 20 years now that, that this could happen. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be interesting to see to see what happens because right. as we see that the classroom sizes keep getting bigger and bigger and then they, they try to tap into that right. permanent fund, which Michael Sanchez, Senate Majority Leader Sanchez, really wants to do and the governor really doesn't want to do. That's right. <laughs> so we'll, it'll be interesting to see if maybe the courts is one way to one well, way to remedy John that. Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and perhaps more too. importantly, <laughs> John Arthur Smith doesn't there, want to I do I think that. there is this question but, though, like, at what point do we say as a state, hey, you know what, it's raining. Like, right. this this is our rainy day. But you look at the amount of money we spend point, in education yeah. in this state, right. we are, that's about the only place we're leading. You look at places we are. We're, according to the National Education Association. The Never Enough Association, NEA. <laughs> that's what we used to We are 18th in per pupil spending I in New Mexico and 48th, 49th in results. I, I hear you. Here's the question, though. Here's the question, and this is the question we ask. So what does it cost to be 50th? This is the question that we ask in business, right? <laughs> this is the question that, that us as MBAs have to ask. It's not, about, it's not about how much you're spending. It's about where you want to get. That's right. It's about where you want to get. And if we want to get someplace good, how much is it going to cost us? It's clearly not happening with what we're doing but here. He, here's the, the, the model that I use, being an old sports anchor, is that, and, I, and I, I'm not an absolutist on this, mm -hmm. just like in Major League Baseball, if you're the Pittsburgh Pirates, you have no chance of winning the World Series. If you're the New York Yankees and you spend more money than anybody else, you have a good chance of winning the World Series, but you are not guaranteed that you're going to win the World Series. Fair enough. It's very similar with education spending. 
You have to spend a certain amount of money if you want to get to a certain plateau. And now you've gotten to the crux but of the But just because you spend the most <laughs> amount of money, though, doesn't mean that you're going to get there. Though. That's true. That Dan and I had a pretty good role about this last time it came up. I'm going to stay with you, Rob, before I get mm -hmm. to you, Dan. Um, where do we know where that line is? where we can be effective. The, all this pullback, we spend too much, we spend too much, with not enough result. Perhaps, as Sophie's saying, we're not spending enough. Why can't we, why can't we just, let me give <laughs> you an example. Well, well, if uh, you're a teacher, hold, hold on guys, hold on guys, hold on guys, Santa Fe. Starting at 18. If you spending. are a teacher in Santa Fe on a teacher's salary, how are you supposed to live in Santa Fe? Let's just, let's just talk that's, that right that, there. That, you, know, that, you live that, in Rio that, Rancho and that's, commute, a, that's what they yeah, all do. Mm -hmm. That's a legitimate question. Mm -hmm. but. I don't know how tapping the permanent fund is going to exactly take care of that. Also, when you think of the, of the, of the money we spend on education, mm -hmm. a lot of it doesn't. And I'm not saying it's wrong and it mm -hmm. should be eliminated, mm -hmm. but a lot of that money does not go to student True spending. True. Right. It goes yeah. to pensions. It goes to a number of other yeah. things. Well, and remember, there, so remember I mean, that they, remember they sued the legislature a few years ago and said, look, they being the, I'm sorry. the school districts okay. and said, you know, it used to be that the legislature said, here's your money pay teachers this, buy books with this, and they sued and said, you can't do that. Right. So now, we come up with this funding, we dump it in the school district, the school district has the right to do with it, they have autonomy mm -hmm. to do it as they choose. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is there's a big disconnect between Santa Fe, the school district, school board people, and then the classroom. Okay. And I think that you're looking at a school board president that's having a tough time accounting for the money that they receive. I think, you know, the question on our little sheet that we got, it says, could Santa Fe and a group of school districts sue the state for more mm -hmm. funding? Mm -hmm. The answer to that is anybody can sue anybody. Mm -hmm. The real question is, can they win? Right. And I think, you know, whatever lawyer is telling them they should win, he should put that in a guarantee because I think you're going to be hard pressed to win this kind of a lawsuit. I think that their grounds I'm are I'm going to stretch it a little bit with Matthew as he's taking a sip there, bad timing. <laughs> but I'll get more but later. it seems to me if they're not going to go it alone, but the other districts in the, in the report was interesting. They're interested, but they don't want to pay for the legal costs to do it. So they're waiting for the bigger districts to do it and carry the freight alone. Yeah, is Santa that going to work? Well, Santa Fe is one of the bigger districts mm -hmm. in the state, and mm -hmm. it, it it is going to take probably one of these big districts if they want to actually win, right. because it's going to cost some, it's going to cost some money to go up against. But it's you know, not going to cost government. them money. Remember, here's the deal: they can do this. The reason that it's the civil rights deal mm -hmm. is, is was it pre 1985? Am I saying that right? That if it's a civil rights deal, your attorney's fees are automatically paid, and so everybody's running to do these right now because any law firm can go in and say, "We'll represent all of you guys on our take." But if we win, we get our attorney's fees from the state. That's right. And it's I like think redistricting. That's right. It's exactly like redistricting. Well, that is a big. Point. That is a big. No, no, it, it, is, a big, it is a big. It is a big. But what'll happen mm -hmm. is that there'll be a settlement and the attorneys will get the money they need. I think the problem is this, is that is the funding formula working? I'm not sure it is at 100%. Okay. The problem we've got, though, is we have such a diverse place. You have schools like in Albuquerque that are in cities and can be funded, and you compare that to Cuba. You compare right. that to Cloudcroft, right. where they got the same cost right. on one-tenth of the students to try formula. to run that school. It's, it's tough yeah. to do it, and I'm not sure they're going to get into the permanent fund. Nobody likes go. to give that up. There you go. Good last note there. We're going to start the clock now as we go after some of the week's other notable headlines with just a minute or so. First up, the Mora County Commission has banned oil and gas drilling. Wait a minute, did somebody say banned in New Mexico? It's a more of a move in principle since there were no wells in the county. But Rob, I loved your reporting on this uh, uh, this week. What's the deal here? Can they actually win this? That's going to be a big question. Yeah. And, you know, earlier in our conversation, we were talking about how the lawyers were going to end up winning. There's going to be lots of lawsuits about this right. uh, more ban on, on drilling and, and fracking. Only if they mm -hmm. find oil and gas up there. Right. <laughs> but uh, but I think a lot of it's going to hinge on, a lot of the legal arguments are going to hinge upon uh, private property rights. Right. Because Shell Oil has about 100,000 uh, acres in eastern Moore County. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And for the, the, does that town or that county have the right to say to supersede federal or state law. There you go. Matthew, what do you think? Well, I think it's, that's another, you know, another interesting precedent because sure. they're the first county that's right. in the, in in the, the country, 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 right, sure. country, country to do this. So it, it's going to be interesting. But like Dan said, it might be a moot point that they don't have any sure. oil, they don't have any oil and gas. It's kind of more seconds. symbolic. I'm just gonna say who's going who's gonna to drop a well if, if this it, thing it, is in That's place. irrelevant. I think the governor's already taken a stance that said if you pass these bans, you get no capital outlay. And I think Moore County is going to go through one legislative cycle of not getting any capital outlay. And they're going to say, this may not be a very good philosophical statement. Interesting. What a dig up right there. A new subject. A Nevada, a Nevada developer has been convicted of siphoning millions off planned housing projects on the Navajo Nation Land, Matthew Reichbach, the Navajo Housing Authority, the NHA, has been a major force, long time, 50 years, cause for reorganizing the NHA, or just sort of one of those weird bumps along the way? 
seems like we get these housing authority <laughs> issues every so it's often. Amazing, isn't it? Maybe uh, we, we need more audits in, the, in those. <laughs> but it was what two point two million dollars yeah. that was yeah. that was he that was said was his own money that he was using as gambling and horse racing and that sort of stuff. So, right. I mean, I, I guess besides just more oversight and more looking into it. Mm -hmm this sort of thing. I you don't know what else can be done. Absolutely, Rob. It's interesting. The other story uh, this week is about how many districts and municipalities are not reporting their <laughs> numbers accurately and on time. Right. You know what I mean? It the, all sort of fits yeah. in this big, giant... Yeah, that's the whole <laughs> audit thing. You know, there's right. 59 entities in the state either receiving and or uh, dispersing right. public funds who have not turned in their state required statutory mm -hmm. Amazing, isn't mm -hmm. it? What do you think of this one, so? I think, you know, with the Navajo Nation, uh, they need this development, they mm -hmm. need the, the houses to be going in, they need to, them to be going up. They need to not have development sitting empty as has, has been ha happening, right. and to not have the vandalism occurring. I think this is a real setback, and uh, it's a lot of dough. I'm really disappointed. It's yeah. a lot of dough. Real quick, if you could. Oh, I just, you know, this, this. I think this is bad for the Navajo Nation. I think Hector Balderas is going to have some tough questions to answer as he's trying to run for Attorney General mm -hmm. when we're not getting this stuff done on the heels of huge, huge problems in New Mexico. There you go. At last, Spaceport America has another tenant. SpaceX, I love the name of this company. <laughs> the company signed a three-year lease this week to test its reusable Bloody rocket from New Mexico facility. I'm going to start with you, Dan. That SpaceX, owned by famed New Mexico skipper, meaning he skipped out on us, <laughs> uh, Elon Musk, who was the, you know, one of the co-founders of right. PayPal, made a ton of dough, but also Tesla, Tesla that we had for a little Cars, bit now in California. That's right. right. What do you think about this one? A new tenant, brand well, new. Well, I mean, we need every tenant we mm -hmm. can get. I, we've talked about this at the table before. I think, you know, the commercial use is going to be the only way the spaceport can survive. Mm -hmm. If we're going to rely on really rich people flying to space, we're going to lose out. If we can find a commercial right. implication out of Spaceport America, we have a chance. He's doing stuff already in Texas. Good stuff. He's the one flying things for the re, redoing the space station. Yeah, and, and, I, and I just have to say of Elon Musk and, and the the Tesla project, Consumer Reports came out with their review of his of his car, the, the S series, and it is like the most perfect car they have ever reviewed. It is a real shame we lost him last time. Yeah, I am so glad he is giving New Mexico a second shot. Yeah, Matthew, what do you think? Like, like Dan said, I mean, that, that's what we need is more tenants down there. Because mm -hmm. I, I was never a big fan of the spaceport at, and it began, but now that we have it, we've got to make it a success somehow. Right. This is one way. Right, going to hold you there, Rob, we're out of time. This is the guy. It's not Branson. I think, I think it's this guy who's going to make this spaceport go. I really do. Put now, your New money Mexico, on Musk. No, <laughs> money on Musk. There you go. New Mexico State University has hired its business school dean and former Republican governor, Gary Carruthers, as the school's president. Sophie, good choice there. He's been around state forever. He's I think it's an interesting choice, entity. but I also think it's a short-term choice. The governor, uh, the, no offense, Governor Carruthers, but he's a, he is a senior gentleman. Sure. Uh, he probably won't, he'll probably retire at some point, let's put it that right, way. Right. Um, it gives them an opportunity to sort of establish his, his known quantity so a little sure. stability yeah. a little political mojo while they make the decision what they're going to do next makes sense That's he knows, I, he I knows the school I yeah. Dr. when dr yeah. martin left you know he had a long tenure there did a great job went to a better deal to be at lsu and, and the louisiana system we brought in a new one turmoil yes. conflict out she went um i think it's hard to get other people to say i want to follow on the heels of that uh, i think he's the I think he's the, what is the person after you get dumped, you date someone for a little while? He's the rebound. <laughs> the rebound. rebound. He's the rebound. rebound he's the rebound president. Not bad, Rob. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Barbara Couture's uh, tenure was less than stellar. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. question I've got is, uh, you know, how much money is he going to make? She was making 392 mm -hmm. grand. That's right, too. That's a good question. You know, uh, and walked out the door with a pretty good amount so, of too, a satchel, <laughs> as they say. I'm going to hold Definitely. you there, Matthew. Now, Tom Udall wants to get the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency involved in an effort to get drugs out of horse racing, Matt. <laughs> uh, you know, it's interesting. To this organization, this is what they do. So it makes a little odd sense, doesn't it, to have this organization do this? Well, yeah, they're one of the most strict ones out there. They're right. Lance Armstrong's least favorite group. Right. <laughs> well, it only there. took them 40 years to and, catch them. But <laughs> it, it's, yeah, if, if anybody can clean up something, it is USADA because they've right. they've gone. They have really stringent tests. There's That's like right. Olympic level testing. While there's still people that are going to try to cheat, at least this will make sure that sure. they have to work a lot harder than they are right now. And on Matthew's point, mm -hmm. Rob, does that give comfort to the industry, to paying patrons, all that kind of thing, having this as a backstop? This is going to be a real rivalry because you've got places like the Racing Commissioners International that's against it. Now, a skeptic could take a look at it and say, of course they don't 
want USADA to step in there That's because right. it's going to be stepping on their own feet. Right. But then again, you could also flip the argument and say USADA wants it because this would be a gigantic increase in the number, uh, in, in their budget, their budget. Like, and, and sure. in, the, in their influence. It's like putting the guys from Breaking Bad in charge of the meth problem, I think. You know, I mean, these guys, <laughs> these guys couldn't, they couldn't catch Lance Armstrong until he was the twilight of his career. Although but, you we, could, but, but you could argue that th that horse racing ex hasn't exactly, you know, Oh, no, no, I'm not saying rest. horse racing is a good right. deal. I'm yeah. saying someone that was supposed to do this for a living and failed at it. Now you're going to put him in charge of another messed up agency. There you go. Yeah. Last subject, new one. Senator Pete Domenici, Harry Reid. We had a situation recently. It was revealed Mr. Reid was not going to meet with Mr. Domenici over the situation with Mr. Laxalt's daughter. You know, I, yeah. I actually found that terribly disappointing because I felt um, the discussion they were to have was over mental health issues, as Sorry. I recall. Mm -hmm. And I and I happened to think that um, Harry Reid's personal issues mm -hmm. with Senator Domenici just are not as important as the discussion that they needed to have mm -hmm. over mental health. Was uh, this a, a Nevada thing, no, protecting I, I, each other? This is my. I think it's. I think it's a bad deal. I don't know how the family of this lady feels about it. But I think the fact that Harry Reid went public with that, mm -hmm. I, I think it was very petty on his part, and I think it, it makes him look very bad. Rob? Yeah, I think that if Michelle Laxalt, the woman who had the child, she hasn't come out and blasted Mr. Domenici. If she hasn't, then I don't know why Harry Reid is. Right, you reported on this, Matthew. Well, it's interesting, it, yeah. Yeah, it, it was a Nevada senator's daughter that he had the yeah. affair with and had right. the child with, so I think, and Harry Reid's from Nevada right. and worked really closely with uh, with Paul Laxalt, so mm -hmm. I think that there's kind of, there's, it's a definitely a personal thing, it's not a... And their wives were close, it yeah, turned yeah. out. Yeah, it yeah. turns out that, well, Harry Reid and Pete Domenici, they travel around the country together, they work together, they got stuff done, but right. I guess uh, this is a bridge too far. Thank you all. Great night, great subjects, really appreciate it. Thank you. That's all the time we have for this week. You can always ask questions, sound off on this week's program, or give us ideas for next week, we love that, by catching up with us on social media, where you can usually find us by searching the name NM In Focus. I'm Gene Grant, we'll see you next week In Focus.